All right, how's everybody doing today, huh? You guys doing good? Good to see you here. I want to welcome everyone. Come on, keep clapping right now. Help me welcome all of our locations and our campuses and those that are joining us online today. We're so glad to have you in our celebration experience. And uh, just a few things before we get to today's message. First of all, yes, next weekend is the big weekend. It is Resurrection Weekend, Easter weekend. How many of you guys are excited? I'm telling you, it's going to be a big, big weekend here at Celebration. And we are going to do the very best. Our team has been working very, very hard to bring you and your family and your friends and everyone that you invite an incredible Easter weekend experience. And let me tell you a couple of things, a couple of ways that you can really uh, be a part of Easter. First of all, um, inviting your friends and family. How many of you know, every, most people or almost everyone is at least willing to give church a try on either Christmas or Easter, am I right? I remember before I started serving Christ, man, I mean, I would go Christmas and Easter. And so, listen, there are people that will come to church next weekend that normally would not come to church, but just because it's Easter and because we have so many different service options for you guys, I'm telling you, you can get them to a service. And so, remember that. Invite people this week. And then also, man, it would really help us, if at all possible, you could attend um, a service time other than Sunday morning. And uh, you saw we have Friday night, we have Saturday night. We're going to be real, real crowded in here, especially all three Sunday morning services, including our 12-12 service. Look, if this is the service that you can make or your friends or family want to come to, that's great. But I'm just letting you know it helps us the more people we can kind of get in those Friday or Saturday services. And then remember, the Sunday 530 service is always a great service if you have kids and for families because we have the big Easter egg hunt extravaganza on the grounds here immediately following that 5.30 Easter service. So that's always a big one for us. And so make sure you get that info sheet as you leave. Also the Seder Passover, Paul Wilbur, who's over our Messianic uh, Jewish Ministries now is going to be leading that Jewish Passover, Messianic Jewish Passover uh, um, experience on Thursday night. And so, man, experience Passover like Jesus and his disciples experienced a very, very powerful experience. We want you to want to make that available to you guys as well, well and just max out Easter weekend. It's going to be awesome. Well, listen, today, I'm not speaking today. I'm resting up because I've got a big, big weekend next weekend. I'm going to be speaking at a lot of services. And then our series runs all the way uh, through Mother's Day, I think, uh, to mid or the end of May. And I'll be speaking, and we've created an incredible series for you. We got a lot of footage when we were in Israel. And we we're going to bring not only the tomb, but the Holy Land to life for you right here at Celebration. But this weekend, we have with us one of uh, just our longtime incredible staff members. He's part of our executive team over all of our student ministries and campuses. Pastor Chris Brooks, everybody. Give it up for Chris. Many of you know that, that, that Chris and his wife, Ashley, uh, were, were two of just seven people. It was Carrie and I, Chris and his wife and three other people that actually planted Celebration Church over 15 years ago. And Chris was one of those founding members, and he's been an awesome friend. Many of you know the story. Chris and I actually were bouncers at the same bar uh, many years ago. Can't you tell? Look, I mean, look at us. Can't, I mean, can't, don't we still look like bouncers? So somehow kind of Chris kept all his stuff and mine just kind of went somewhere else. But actually, because that's because I quit being a bouncer several, you know, a long time ago. But Chris finally just gave it up last weekend. That's why we're letting him preach this Sunday. So come on, church, give it up for Pastor Chris Brooks. Thank you, Pastor Stovall. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus on Palm Sunday. Great to see you guys. It's, it's great to speak to you today. And I um, want to greet our online audience, those up in the loft. And it's going to be a, a great day in God's house on Palm Sunday. You know, I found many people like to learn about God's voice, hearing God's voice. I know it's something I've always been interested in and I want to continue to grow in. And I want to speak to you about a specific area of hearing God's voice this morning. 
hearing God in our hearts. And I want to talk to you about the subject, a hearing heart. Hearing heart. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for a great day today. And we open our hearts to you, Lord, that we can leave our time together, change Jesus, and closer to you. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Um, in Proverbs, it says this, above all things, guard your heart. For it deter one translation says this, it determines the course of your life. I mean, can you get any stronger language than that? Above all things, guard your heart, for it determines the course of your very life, it says. And so our heart is very important. And in the Old Testament, God spoke, and uh, people seem to hear God in their ears. You know, he seemed to speak from above. But in the New Covenant, he speaks to our hearts. And so the heart in the Bible, it represents our desires or our will. And so even back in Deuteronomy, love the Lord your God with all of your what? Your heart, soul, and strength. In Jeremiah, it says this, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart, it says. And so uh, God speaks to people differently for sure, and we're all wired differently. Some people like to you know, they say, I hear God when I jog, or I don't hear God when I jog. I don't know. I, I um, get tired. How about you? Some people say, I hear God on the golf course. I certainly don't hear God on the golf course. I hear the devil. He says stuff like this, like uh, destroy something, kill something. I go home and have low self-esteem that day, you know. But, um, you know, some people say, I hear God in the shower. You know, God speaks differently, but a lot of that just has to do with being in a quiet place, right? I went uh, hunting a few weeks ago, and we were walking in the woods at like 6 a.m. It was so quiet, and, and you know, walking in the darkness, and I just I feel like, man, I haven't heard this quietness in so long. I was just praying. I said, God, is there anything you want to speak to me that I haven't been able to hear? You know, even Jesus, the scripture says he went to a solitary place where there he prayed. He went up on a mountain. He hid himself so he could, he could pray to the Father. And so some of that just has to do with getting in a place that's quiet where we can hear. But I want to start by giving you three misconceptions about hearing God's voice. Three misconceptions about hearing God's voice. Number one is that God no longer speaks. And there's people that teach that God no longer speaks. And um, maybe you've heard someone teach this, or maybe you believe, believe this. A good question to ask someone who says this is, well, who called you to preach? Because it, it, it was probably God. That means he's still speaking. But we, we know, of, of course, the primary way that God speaks is, is through the Bible. Some people teach the only way God speaks is through the Bible. And we know that that's one of the main ways that God speaks, and he's never going to say anything that contradicts his word. In fact, the more I found out for myself, the more I saturate my life with the Word, the more I have it hidden in my heart and memorize it, the easier it is for God to speak to me through His, through his Word. But some people think that that's the only way that He speaks. And we know God's not going to contradict the Bible ever, you know, and it's always good when he, you feel like he, He's told you something to always go to a trusted friend and get a confirmation from what you feel like He said. That's always a good safeguard. But there's a scripture that says, Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. One of the first scriptures I memorized. Jesus is the same. And we serve a living God who wants to communicate with his children. Amen? And so one of the things that's helped me, so, some people get confused about hearing God's voice. I'm going to talk about that a little more in a minute. But something that really helped me in hearing God's voice is this. If you're a believer today, if you have a relationship with Jesus, God spoke to you. If you're a Christian, you heard his voice. He opened up your heart by grace and you received by faith. And that was God calling out and speaking to you. The scripture says in Revelation, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the, the door, I'll come in and have a relationship, have fellowship with him. And so if you're a believer, you heard God's voice. Now, it would make no sense for God to open up your heart through his grace, you to respond by faith, and then for him to give you a cold, the cold shoulder till you get to heaven. That makes no sense, does it? Why would God do that? And so he wants to speak to you. I remember years ago, um, it, this is probably 14 years ago, I was driving down 3rd Street to go see Ashley. She was teaching out at um, Fletcher Middle School, and I was just praying on the way there, and I, you know, it was one of these times I was just praying to the Lord, and I was asking him, you know, uh, God, I really want to make my life count for you. I want to be used in your kingdom, and I was just praying those kind of prayers, driving on the road, and I mean, if I've ever heard God's voice clearly, I felt like this is what he said. 
Chris, I didn't save you just so you could go to heaven. And I just, I mean, I was even, you know, I was like tearing up in my car. It was like, God, and God just showed me. And the scripture says, I mean, th think how crazy that would be. He wants a relationship with us. The scripture says in Ephesians that we are his workmanship, created in Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Another translation says that God has prepared paths for us to walk. And so God has assignments, purposes for us to do. And how is he going to show us that? He wants to communicate to us through our hearts. He wants to show us. And so um, number one, some people say God no longer speaks. That's a myth. And number two is some people say, well, God only speaks to some. You know, God only, you know, and so sometimes we read the Bible, and we see how God spoke to the prophets or the patriarchs. And that was true in the Old Testament a lot. He was speaking to people through priests, and people had to go to the priests. But the, the New Testament teaches us that we're a priesthood of the believers. We can all go directly to the throne of grace and hear from God ourselves. And so in Acts chapter 2, it says, and it shall come to pass. In fact, this is a, a fulfillment of a prophecy in Joel chapter 2. It says, it shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out my spirit out upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. What's happening here? God is communicating with people. It's the new covenant. It's no longer just going to be a select few. But he says, I'm going to pour my spirit out upon everyone. And you, you can hear the voice of God. God's trying to communicate. He says, it doesn't matter your gender. You're young or you're old. You're a, a, a son or daughter. It doesn't matter what your age or gender is. He, can, he wants to communicate with us. And so communication is vital in every relationship, isn't it? Think of a marriage. It's communica communication's everything in a marriage, isn't it? It's like blood is to the human body. It nourishes and sustains a relationship. If you remove communication, you no longer have a relationship. You just have a title. So communication is super important, especially in our relationship with God. I remember one of the first sermons, this was years ago, a sermon I heard, it was called Listening Prayer. And I'll never forget that title because it seemed like every time I went to God in prayer, I did all the talking. And that sermon really spoke to me and it said, I need to learn to be more of a listener in prayer. Communication, it's a two-way avenue. And so uh, the, the idea that God only speaks to some or God no longer speaks, those are myths. Let me give you a third one. Is that hearing God is hard. Hearing God is hard. The scripture so clearly teaches, Jesus said this, he said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I mean, that is as clear as he could put it, isn't it? He said, my sheep hear. I know them and they follow me. He couldn't have made it any clear. But here's what happens. I think hearing God should be natural, innate. It should be something that we all do, but somehow we make it hard. And I was praying about this. I said, why do we make it hard? And I, I thought of a few things. You know, I believe that we can grow in maturity and discernment and hearing God's voice. We certainly should grow in that and we can grow in that. But in some ways, hearing from God for me has gotten harder since I was a new Christian. And here's why. Because when that which was once precious to us becomes familiar, we can lose our expectancy. We can lose our passion. And so why, why is that? There, when I was a new Christian, there was such a dependency to hear God's voice. I knew I couldn't do it on my own, and there was, I knew I needed his help, and I didn't know what to do. And so there was a dependency and a humility and maybe even a childlike faith. I didn't have all the answers. And Jesus said that that's the kind of faith that, that comes to God, a, a faith of a child. And, and so, you know, having this idea of, a, of just a sim simple, expectant, childlike faith, that's a heart that's fertile soul for God to speak to. But sometimes we can drift from that, and it just becomes too familiar. We start to just kind of do it on our own. And then I also found out that I didn't really want to hear God's voice because I wasn't sure I wanted to hear what he had to say. So I remember I would pray and I'd be like, okay, if I really want to hear God's voice, if I really listen, God's going to say something like this, Chris, I want you to move to Africa and live in a hut and marry someone very unattractive all the days of your life for thou must suffer for my name's sake. 
I thought, you know, I just felt like it was, I, thought, I thought like it just had to be something sincere. God, first, I felt like God was going to make me suffer somehow if I really listened to him and, and obeying, and it would just be horrible. So I wasn't so sure I wanted to hear what he had to say. And then, then I got into this thing where, you know, I just felt like hearing God, it's got to be something sensational. Like God's going to help me create the iPhone or something. Like he's going to you know, like he's going to give me some just mega idea that only God could tell me. And I would be some sensational thing that he would speak to me about a nation or an, inven an invention or something, you know. And, and so here's what I found out. God loves to speak to your identity. What does that mean? That means he loves to tell you that he loves you, that he's proud of you, that you're, you're his son, that you're his daughter, that that you can trust him. I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, I encourage you, go home this afternoon and just listen to that smil, st still small voice, and I will be surprised if you don't hear something like this. I love you. That's what God wants to know. That's what he wants you to know. And, and, and it doesn't have to be sensational. It doesn't mean you're gonna to move to Africa or something. You just listen to that, and, and, and I'm telling you, that voice, Hearing his God will always flow into that voice of encouragement, a loving father who wants to talk to you. Another way I felt like I made God hard is like this. I'm not really listening, but I'm hearing what I want to hear. You know, kids do that sometimes, don't they? And I, and I make it hard by projecting my timing and my expectations on the Lord. So it's like this. I go to the Lord and I'm trying to listen to him, but I already know what I'm going to do. And I already know how and when I want something to happen, and it works more like this. God, would you do this, 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 and this now and bless these goals? Amen. Thank you, Lord. That's much more how I would pray. And I, I wouldn't really listen to say, okay, God, what are you trying to say? What do you want in this situation? And I've found out it's a much better way to go to the Lord in prayer with a heart of surrender. And just say this, God, you're the Lord. I want, I'm listening. In fact, I've been praying that much more the last couple of years. Lord, I'm listening. Is there anything you want to say to me? And not, not just coming to the Lord and just, you know, trying to project all of what I want on him and calling it faith, but just listening to see what he says and, and calling it surrender. In fact, I found out it's much easier to say that he's in control than to believe that he's in control. And lots of Christians can, will say, well, God's in control. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, but it's easy to say. It's another thing to believe it in your heart and, and walk in trust and surrender and, and go to the Lord and see what he has to say. And so maybe you've been confused about hearing God's voice. Maybe, you know, you, you feel like you miss God. You know, those things happen to all of us. And I want to encourage you, don't give up. You know, hearing God's voice, it gives you an edge in your Christian life, a passion, a clarity, a freshness. It can be the same thing. It's the same experience that when you experience salvation. That's what I found out. When you really, when God speaks to your heart and you know it's him, it's the similar, to me, it's a similar experience that I experienced at salvation. I remember when Pastor Stovall called me in Shreveport to move to Jacksonville to help him launch the church. Man, I felt something on the inside of me, burning. And this, there's a scripture, there's a passage on the, where the disciples are walking with Jesus on the road to Emmaus, and they say this, didn't our hearts burn within us as he spoke to us on the road? That same idea of, you know, hearing the voice of the Lord, it burning in your heart, it gives you something that there's nothing like life gets infused, passion, purpose. This stuff gets infused in your heart and life when you hear his voice. I want to encourage you. Don't let misconceptions keep you from hearing and following the voice of God. And I want to, uh, uh, the last part of this uh, sermon here at the end, I want to give you uh, three conditions that prevent a hearing heart. So if you have your Bibles, flip over to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. And this is a familiar story. It's when Jesus was out in the wilderness and he was tempted and he, he was out there for 40 days. And the, power, the scripture says he comes back in the power of the spirit and he goes to Nazareth, as was his custom, it says. And he goes into the synagogue as you know, his normal day. He walks in the synagogue and he stands up and they hand him a book. He opens the book of Isaiah 
And he begins to quote Isaiah 61. And he says this, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives. He starts, begins to quote this, this, this chapter, this prophecy. He, he shuts the book and he sits down and he says this, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. I mean, that's heavy, isn't it? I mean, that's just heavy to think about, you know? And what, how did the people respond? I mean, the scripture says all their eyes was upon them. But then they don't receive from him. They say this, is this not Joseph's son? This is just Joseph's son. I mean, I remember when we changed his diapers. I mean, I, we knew his brothers and sisters. He was just a carpenter's son down the street from us. This, I mean, he's saying that this prophecy is fulfilled today. And their heart was full of contempt. A condition that keeps us from hearing from God is a heart of contempt. Here's what contempt means. It means base, common, or average. It means not showing respect for. And so this is what a heart of contempt says. God may or may not speak to me. I don't really care that much. I mean, I've kind of been there, done that. I'm just kind of going through life. I'm not just not that concerned about it. And so has anyone ever had a jury duty before? Raise your hand. A few of you, you know, I've gotten a couple of letters. I've had to go down there. I'm just praying, God, I hope they don't pick me. Yeah, you know, I know you said the same thing. But you, you can't get out of jury duty except for very specific, I mean, if you're having a baby or something, or there's some unique things that get you out of that. If not, you have to go down there. And, and so if you don't show up, what happens? You're in contempt of court. You're not showing the honor to the court. And so here's what happens. That's, that's a great example of content. It doesn't matter if you don't want to go or not. You have to show reverence. You have to show honor. And so if we're going to hear from God, we have to give him that right place in our lives. Now, listen, it's not about trying to earn his love or perform for him. I'm going to talk about that. But here's what it is. Paul said this, that I may know him. How many of you know Paul already knew him? He met him on the road to Damascus. He was blind for three days. I mean, he was called up to the third heaven. He knew and he met Jesus, but his prayer in Philippians was this, that I may know him and have a continual. So here's what it is. It's having an intentional desire to pursue and cultivate the love of God, the, love, the relationship with a father. That's a heart that's fertile soil that God can speak to. It's a heart that says this, I'm listening. I, I want to hear, I know that you're speaking. I'm listening to hear what, what you want to say. And so God, he loves us. He gives us grace. We all go through seasons. There's a rhythm of our life. And so there's no condemnation. But you want to have a dependence and expectation that God is trying to communicate to a son or daughter that he loves. And so number one is a heart of contempt. It can, our, this can grow in our our hearts, I remember uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I shared with our staff, I mean, Celebration Church will be 16 years old um, in August. That's a lot of services. We've had a lot of services. I've heard Pastor Stovall preach a lot of messages. We, we, we've had a lot of sermons. You, you know, I've had a lot of worship experiences. I mean, when we started the church, uh, Pastor Carrie used to sing. She's a, a great worship leader. You guys don't even know, they probably didn't even know that. I played electric guitar, Pastor Stovall played the keyboards. We're going to put that memory behind us and move on. Lots of worship experiences, lots of sermons. And so do you know what I, have, what I told the staff a few weeks ago? What I do when I come in God's house, I try to do something like this. I don't do it every time, but a lot of times I'll say something like this. Jesus, I love you more today than I have ever before. And some of you have been worshiping Jesus for a lot of years, and you don't want contempt to grow in your heart. When that which is once precious becomes familiar, it's hard. It's hard to have that expectancy. And so just keep that fresh. Just say this, I love you today more than ever before. I'm here to worship you. I'm not going to get focused on the waves or the band. I'm focused on you, Jesus, because I love you. Amen. And just make that decision. Just make, it, make that decision now. A second condition is this, a heart of fear and shame. Let me explain what that means. Um, if you flip in your Bibles over to Luke chapter 5, it's a story about Peter and, um, and Jesus. And so we, we went to Israel just a few weeks ago, and you're going to love the Way series where some of this footage we're going to show, it's going to be awesome. And this Sea of Galilee, I mean, Pastor Stovall, he loves fishing, so we knew he was going to try to fish in the sea. I mean, he, that's all he wanted to do. He says, can I get a net? Can I get a net? I'm going to fish. You know, so he, he fished in the Sea of Galilee. We were right where this story happened. 
And, and so um, what happens is Jesus is teaching. He's sitting in a boat, and there's a big crowd out there, and, and uh, he, he teaches, and then he's in Peter's boat, and he says this, can you push off from the edge and, and launch out into the deep, and you'll, you'll catch some fish. And Peter says, Lord, we've been fishing all night. We haven't caught anything. And he says, but at your word, I'll obey it. And so, of course, he starts to catch fish, and they just the, the nets are breaking. They fill the whole boat up. Another boat comes, it says, and, and Peter sees all the fish, and he says this, uh, depart from me, Lord, for I'm a sinful man. And so sometimes you, we know that Peter, you know, when he saw this, he was like, God, you're so good. I didn't, um, you know, that's kind of, to me, that's what it kind of means. Uh, you're just so good. I'm sorry I didn't believe you, you, you know. But here's what I, I want you to know. A heart of fear and shame can keep you from hearing God's voice. If your filter is always trying, you, you know, to, to filter out condemnation and shame, it can block you from hearing the voice of God. And God knew that Peter had issues, but he still spoke to him. And so the enemy wants to say this, when you get good enough, then you can hear God's voice. Or he wants to say this, God's not going to speak to you because you're not good enough. That's what he wants you to believe. And so the reality is because of what Christ did on the cross, because he paid the price for all of our sins, Hebrews 4.16 says this, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. It says this, we can come boldly to the throne. There's no condemnation. We don't have to get good enough. We can come straight to the throne and talk to God. I found out that many times the enemy wants to keep us from God just when we need to come to him the most. That's called grace. We're never going to be good enough to come into his presence. That's why Jesus went to the cross and the veil was rent so we could come, to the, come into his, the Holy of Holies 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's called grace. And so no more condemnation in Christ. I remember Pastor Stovall was just preaching a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, something I wrote down and he said this, I'm, I'm tired of condemnation. I'm over condemnation. I'm, I'm just sick. I'm not, I, he, this is what Pastor Stovall said. I remember a long, he said, I got tired of being sick of condemnation. I'm getting it out of, it, of my life. I'm over it. I'm over it. I want to encourage you guys. Maybe you're at a place where you, this condemnation is keeping you from God. The scripture says, there, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. And you want to make a decision just, just like we said, I'm over that. I'm sick of condemnation. I'm not going to let that keep me from God anymore. I'm going to make a decision that there is no more condemnation. Nothing can separate me from his love. Whether I have a good day, a bad day, I make a mistake, I'm not going to let that enter in and block hearing the voice of God, a loving father who wants to speak to me. And you can just make that decision that that stuff is over in my life. Can I have a good amen? amen. <clears throat> a third condition that keeps us from hearing God is an inward heart. And so there in your Bible, flip over to chapter uh, 5, verse 17, it says this. Now, it happened on a certain day as it was teaching that there were Pharisees and, Sadd and Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting. You could circle the word sitting. These guys are just sitting there. Who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. You can underline that in your Bible, and that's just a powerful verse to me. It's always stuck out to me. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when the crowd could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, when they found out how they couldn't bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on a housetop and let him down with his bed through the tiling into the midst before Jesus. And so these guys, they wanted to get their friend to Jesus, but there was such a big crowd, they brought him in through the roof. And so to me, it's two different pictures of two different hearts in the presence of Jesus. The power of the Lord was present to heal, but the, the Pharisees and the lawyers, they, they didn't get it. They missed it. Why? Because of their hearts. They were religious. They were kind of looking down their nose a bit. These other guys said, man, Jesus is here. The power of the Lord is there. I just need to get this guy to Jesus. And the scripture goes on to say, he saw the guy, he forgives there. He, and the scripture actually says, when Jesus saw their faith, speaking of the friends, he forgave their sins, and then he healed the guy. Of course, the, the Pharisees said this, who is this man that thinks he can 
forgive sins. Can you see two different conditions? One is an inward heart and one is an outward heart. And if we want to hear God's voice, what I've learned is if your heart is for others, you'll begin to hear the voice of God much easier and much clearer. Why? Because God is always looking for someone to, sh to share. He wants you to share his love with someone. And when you have a filter like this, who can I encourage? Who can I love? Who can I comfort? You'll start to hear God's voice because the scripture says he, he has called us to be ministers of reconciliation. That means he, that's a part of our job is to go out and restore a relationship with people who have broken fellowship with a loving father who so desperately wants to, them to know him. And so when you start to say this, who can I encourage? Who can I comfort? In your own family, at your jobs, in your neighborhood, who can I just share an encouraging word? You watch how God begins to speak. When, when our hearts turn inward sometimes, it's harder to hear. That's what I found out. When you start to turn that to encouragement, exhorting, comforting others, you'll start to hear again. And you'll be so surprised how God will say, Chris, I want you to encourage that person. And you step out and obey, and they'll be like, man, I can't believe you, you said that. that's just what I needed today. An outward heart is a fertile soul for a heart that hears God. I want to uh, close here with a story. I mean, years ago, I mean, this was when the church was new, and uh, we've, you know, we, we don't do a lot of weddings in our buildings, so I've done weddings all over Jacksonville. Every nook and cranny of Jacksonville, I've done weddings in, I feel like. And so uh, I did, Pastor Stovall and I joined a gym. It was right next to our office when we first moved here. And the Lord just gave me a burden for the, the, the manager there who signed us up. So I just began to pray for her. And, um, and then she comes up to me one day and she says, are you a pastor? I said, um, you know, I don't look like a pastor. Aren't you sorry? She's surprised she asked that. She says, are you a pastor? Yeah. And I said, yeah, I am. And she says, well, do y'all do weddings? I said, sure. I feel like people don't invite me to do weddings anymore because I, I feel like I look like Stone Cold Steve Austin or somebody in their wedding <laughs> picture. You know, they, they don't want like a, a WWE character in their wedding photo or something. <laughs> so, so anyway, she, she comes in and, and, I, I, and invites me to do a wedding. So I said, come over to our office. And, uh, and I just began to share with them. I said, so tell me about your relationship with the Lord. And, you know, I ended up leading them to Christ. And, um, and they, they committed their lives to the Lord. Her fiance was in the Navy. And then, then I go to do their, her wedding ceremony. Well, it was outside. I'd only done like one other wedding in my life. And it started getting dark. I'm, I'm like, oh, no, I can't see the notes. You know, I'm not going to be able to, to read the vows. So I was kind of getting nervous because I was like, I mean, there's a lot of people there. And I, you know, I, didn't, I couldn't see them. And so I said, Ashley, she was with me. I said, can you, um, can you go to my truck and bring me that snake light? And I'll, I'll tie it in the tree behind me, and it'll shine down on my notes, and I can do the sermon. So she did. I rigged it up in the tree behind me, and, and I read the notes there and, and, and performed the ceremony. It was funny because it was all of these uh, bodybuilders. They were all sitting out in the, uh, was, I called it the bodybuilder wedding. They were all sitting out there all swole up. Um, <laughs> during the ceremony, I looked out and saw them. And, so I, I did the wedding, and, and then, uh, you know, there was some I, sweet iced tea left over from the ceremony. And so I stuck it in the back of my truck, and I, and I forgot about it. And let me tell you something. You might be a redneck <laughs> if you have a snake light in your truck driving around looking for a wedding ceremony to perform. And then someone, this is a true story, someone sent me an email, and it said this. Um, <laughs> you might be a redneck if you drive around with ice, sweet iced tea in the back of your truck looking for a party. <laughs> <laughs> The reason I tell you this story is, you know, God gave me this burden for, for this young lady, and, and I began to pray for her and, and, and talk to her. Next thing I know, she's getting married. I'm doing this ceremony. They end up coming to our church, and I'm, I'm not making all this up. She, she, she ends up coming. Her parents, the, um, the groom, his parents, her brother, her sister, the wedding coordinator, all of these families began to come worship at Celebration Church from an outward heart. I know many of you could sell, I know many of you guys could say this many stories just like that, and that's how, that's how it works, but I want to encourage you, ask the Lord, who can I invite next week to Easter? There's no condemnation, but, but look, it's going to take an outward heart, 
It's gonna take it's gonna take a burden, you know, a burden for someone else. Who can I bring them to the Friday night service? Bring them to one of the Saturday services. Lots of options. Who can I encourage? Who can I like? You'll be surprised how God will speak to you. And the pres the power of the Lord is present to heal. Amen. His presence is here, and people need it. You know. The scripture talks about there's a dry and thirsty land out there where there's no water. In God's house, there's living water. Jesus said, if any man drink, he'll never thirst again. Amen. And I, I, wanna, um, I want you guys to stand. And here's what I want to pray for. I just want to pray. I, I know that we get confused about hearing God's voice and some of maybe we believe different things or we feel like we've missed it or condemnation gets in the way or we don't have an expectancy. I want to pray. That scripture, that my sheep hear my voice and, and, and I know them and, and they follow me, that God breaks all of that and brings us into that intimacy, that relationship with a Father who loves us, amen? Amen, let's pray for that. Father, right now, God, I just thank you so much for everyone under the sound of my voice, God. And right now, we just expose every lie of the enemy that we believed. We thank you that you love us, that you're speaking to us. I, I just pray against condemnation. God, there would be no filters that keep us from hearing your voice right now. And I just pray you just begin to speak to hearts, just telling people how much you love them, that they can trust you. God, we surrender control to you. We ask you to, we, we want you to know you can, you can have your way. God, we take our hands off and we surrender it to you. And we thank you for peace that comes when we surrender everything to you, God. We thank you for speaking right now. We're listening, Lord. We want to posture ourselves with a heart that listens, Lord, with a hunger and a humility to follow you, God, a dependence upon you, Lord. And if there's anyone here today and you say, Pastor Chris, I just need a fresh start with God. I just want to make a commitment to him today. If that's you, just slip a hand up. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone to be included? Yeah. We're going to pray for you. You can just pray this prayer right in your heart. Father, we thank you so much for loving us. And we turn away from our old, old life, our old ways, and we turn to you, Jesus. We thank you for making us a new creation and, and forgiving us of all of our sins. And we commit to following you all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's put our hands together.